Hello friends and welcome to the English version of Defense Matrix. We've all heard the news about the approval of a rupees 48000 crore proposal to purchase the Tejas Mark 1A by the Cabinet Committee on Security, which is headed by none other than Prime Minister Modi himself. This is great news and at this point the government of India and the IAF have done their part. After signing the contract, HAL will have committed to roll out the first Mark 1A aircraft in 18 months. At the moment, the Mark 1 has about 50% of indigenously designed components, which would be enhanced to 60% in the Mark 1A. HAL is gearing up for production at its manufacturing facilities in both the Nashik and Bengaluru divisions. With this augmentation of infrastructure, the outlook is very positive on timely production and timely delivery. This is a huge leap in the ideal of Atmanirbhar Bharat, and this is the biggest order in history of any indigenous weapons platform in India. Through several previous videos, we've discussed the LCA Tejas Mark I, compared it with a potential adversary, the JF-17 Block III, and known in what terms it already outclasses the Block III JF-17. Today, we'd be discussing the Mark I-A on its own, contrasting it with a similarly designed Mirage that's also operated by the IAF, its expected role, and where it stands in the larger scheme of things. The Tejas Mark I is by no means a perfect aircraft. If it were, that there'd be no need for a Mark 1A and no need for a Mark 2. The design of the Tejas was inspired by the Mirage 2000, whose performance the IAF is apparently very happy about, and the Tejas was eventually built on the basis of a need for a similar aircraft. Obviously, the Tejas has a number of similarities with the Mirage, but at the same time, it's different in important ways. Structurally, they share the commonality of being delta winged. However, they're quite different in the positioning of wings. The Mirage has low mounted wings while the wings of the Tejas are mid mounted. Consequently, aerodynamic performance is not identical. It can be seen that the surface area of delta wings tends to be larger than swept wings, causing higher drag. In fact, during turns, the entire body of the aircraft acts like an air brake. Although this allows the aircraft to turn really quickly, the downside is that this air drag causes energy losses in the process and it needs to burn additional fuel to regain momentum. To offset this, the Mirage has a higher fuel carrying capacity when compared to the Tejas. One of the shortcomings of the Tejas is that its internal fuel carrying capacity is not particularly great and to work around this constraint, external drop tanks will have to be used, possibly along with air to air refueling. In a combat scenario, planners will have to consider logistics for air-to-air -air refueling, and it's conceivable that a new order for refuelers might be placed at some point to support the crop of 83 Mark 1A fighters that will be flying soon. The point is, the energy loss during turns of a delta wing fighter demand a larger fuel tank capacity or mid-air refueling support. Because delta wing aircraft lose energy during turns, they have slightly lower sustained turn rates. when evading missiles or when in a dogfight this is undesirable more so when low speed performance isn't particularly outstanding for this reason delta wing aircraft often rely on their engines to a larger extent better response and better thrust to weight ratio are an important aspect and on this front the tejas sits comfortably with a thrust to weight ratio of greater than 1 which is a pretty good number To quickly mention a couple of other aspects of differentiation between the Tejas and the Mirage 2000, the mid-mounted wing design of the Tejas aims at balancing stability and maneuverability, while the Mirage's low-mounted wings prioritize maneuverability and aerodynamic performance over stability. Going by public records, it appears that the Mirage can pull 9 Gs with ease and even stretch it to 10 G, whereas the Tejas is said to be at around 8 G. Now let's move on to some of the advantages that the Tejas has. Even if it's a disadvantage in some respects like a lower fuel carrying capacity, the small size of the LCA Tejas has its benefits. The compact aircraft has an impressively small radar cross section of just 0.5 square meters, which makes it a particularly lethal offensive platform. This factor is critical in beyond visual range combat, which is increasingly becoming the main form of standoff in this day and age. Because of the low RCS, the Tejas can spot its targets much before it is spotted by the other, allowing it to fire BVR missiles first. This makes the Tejas a very effective platform for offensive missions, despite the maneuverability limitations referred to earlier. The reason that its maneuverability has been compared with that of the Mirage is that the latter is a good benchmark for performance and shares a similar wing design with the Tejas. However, if one were to compare the Tejas with the JF-17 instead, 
which we've done in several videos before, the Tejas would dominate any contest with the JF-17 owing to its superior instantaneous turn rate. In a single circle dogfight, the Tejas would have an upper hand due to this advantage and should emerge as the victor. Because it's well suited for offensive missions, it requires the best avionics, radar and BVR missiles. And this is precisely why the Mark 1A iteration is being built. And to defend itself, it needs top-of-the-line electronic countermeasures and jammers that the Mark 1A will be carrying. Another important aspect is that because of its mid-mounted wing configuration, the Tejas has very good stability and is therefore well suited for ground attack missions. And coupled with its low RCS and its ground attack capabilities, the Tejas will turn out to be an ideal platform for cross-border ground attacks and covert op. Hopefully, this gives some insight into the role of the Tejas, its strengths and its limitations. In its current configuration, the LCA Tejas exceeds its original purpose of being a replacement for retired MiG-21s, MiG-27s and MiG-23s, and it's efficient to engage with the Pakistan Air Force as and when required. It would be unreasonable to expect the Tejas to be a world-beating platform in its very first iteration, and it isn't possible with any new product produced anywhere in the world. However, it more than meets its design objectives, it outclasses its main adversaries like the JF-17 of any variation and is sufficient to deal with cross-border challenges. The evolution of the Tejas is unfolding in a very interesting manner and its capabilities are growing steadily and swiftly. For the role that was envisioned for it in the beginning and for the role that it needs to play today, the Tejas does a very good job. It's important not to lose sight of the fact that the Mark 1A is only an interim version meant to bridge the journey from the Mark 1 to the Mark 2 which has already started to be manufactured. The Mark II addresses the key shortcomings of the Mark I. It will have a larger fuel tank, it will have canards to enhance sustained turn rate performance, and it will have a better engine with a higher thrust to weight ratio, among many other enhancements. The Mark II will exceed the performance of the Mirage and is expected to turn out to be a perfect replacement for the Mirage and its class of aircraft. And on this note, we conclude this discussion. We'd appreciate it if you can like the video and subscribe to the channel. Jai Hind!